Hello, welcome to part two in our series talking about module instantiation. What we're going to do now is we're going to pick up uh, the subject of buses and we're going to go back. So in part one, we instantiated this uh, module, we created, sorry, we created the circuit schematic Right, that f is a function of a and it would be or be c, and we use these individual uh, single bit inputs. What I want to do is I want to create the same circuit schematically, so I transitioned over here to this blank schematic, right, where we're actually then saying that our output f is going to be a function of x2 and with x1 or with x0. So the x2, x1, x0 is going to take the place of a, b, and c. And we're going to define x as a bus then. So we have one input pin, right? And so our, our input pin syntax is actually just x uh, bracket two dot dot zero. That's the schematic syntax, which is a little bit different than the Verilog, right? What I'm going to do is if I draw a wire out of this, right? Notice that this wire, or this is a bus. So when I draw this, it's not just a single wire. It actually represents three wires. And so if I want to connect X2 to the AND gate, so I've already got an AND gate and an OR gate here. What I need to do schematically is I need to name this bus. So I can right click on this, or double click will do it too. And I could name the bus. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and give the bus the same name. Uh, so two dot dot zero. And so what we do is once we name this bus, then we can start picking off individual uh, bits from the bus. So over here in the AND gate, I can draw, right, the AND gate expects a single wire. So when I make that connection, notice it's not a stick, so that's a wired connection. As a matter of fact, properties, right, we bring it up. And now I can say x bracket two bracket. And that says I want to connect x2 to the AND gate. And what that does is it knows that there's a bus with the name of X. So it looks for a bus with the name of X and two dot dot zero. So there's on this bus, there's X2, there's X1, X0. Basically what it does is you can think of it as it just wires this to X wire number two on this bus. All right, same way here, if I draw a wire, I'm gonna right click properties. I'm gonna say, well, we were gonna end X1 with that. So, x1 in brackets. So there's my x2 end with x1, right? I'm going to then the output of that AND gate is supposed to be ORD with x0. So we will name this wire x0. Notice we still have a single bit on the output, but like I said, our first example, we transition to having an input that is a three bit bus, right? So let's save this as circuit three. Right. Now let's create a block symbol for, of the circuit. So file, create update, create symbol files for current file. All right. And so now let's get another new schematic, file new, block diagram schematic. Let's insert the symbol we made. So let's go up to our project menu. This one's called circuit three. All right, so let me magnify that a bit. All right, so now you can see we've got, right, this bus X2 to zero, a single output out. Right. The same way we did in our other example back in circuit two, we said, well, we wanna connect these switches to it. Right. We want to connect switch two to this A, switch one to B, switch zero to C, right? And we had this single red LED on our output. All right. So over here, we're going to add an input pin, right? We're going to add one output pin. So over here, I'm just gonna say, okay, connect that to my red LED. Actually, probably syntactically for the schematic here, I need to, if I was going to use this in design for course, I likely have to say zero dot, dot zero, but 
I'm just going to leave this LED R0. Our bus then switch to dot dot zero. So the, like I said, the dot dot zero is the schematic way of creating a bus. This is a three bit bus, right? I can just directly wire this to this input. And I think I can just directly wire this. Oh, I, so for some reason I got an output pin here. And I can't change the properties from output to input. So let's fix that. Again, SW 2.0 for the schematic. Now we make the connection here. What this does is by default, this will connect switch two to X2, switch one to X1, switch zero to X0. So it makes a one-to-one -one order connection on a bus, right? Higher order bit to higher order bit, lower order bit to lower order bit, right? We've still got our single bit output. All right, this is what then our circuit would look like. I could save this file. Save, I'm gonna call that circuit four. And all right, sorry, I'm trying to quiet my dog who you may hear snoring in the background. Hopefully not. All right, so we've got our circuit schematic. Let's see how we would do this in Verilog now. So let's then file new, right, new Verilog file. Keyword module, right? So circuit three, so I'm gonna call the circuit three V. Right, our inputs were X, our output was F, input. X was a three bit bus. So our input wire X is two colon zero. This is a Verilog syntax. X. Our output wire is F. It's a single bit if we don't define a bus size but by default. And we're going to write a module that says assign to F. Right. Well, that was our X2 and it was our x1 and we're going to or that with x0 right so we've used these verilog bitwise operators continuous assignment statement so that keyword assign that's continuous assignment statement and module well, there's our circuit 3b module let's say file create update oh i have not saved it File save, so circuit 3v, and file create update. So we could create a symbol file from this. All right, if we were to go back to our circuit four, right, here's the symbol file we created from our block schematic. Well, we can insert, insert symbol here. Here's what we just created from our Verilog module. All right, now we could connect switches to this with this bus. I could do this. Now I can't have an output that has the same name. Right. I could say, right. If I wanted to program, a board with this or simulate to show that these both produce the same results. I could do that. Let's just say that we want the Verilog circuit output to be on red LED one. Right. So we could do this just as easily and add this into a schematic. Or we could simply get rid of the block symbol for circuit three. Change this to, oh, come on. Try to double click to let me change it. it Seem to be working, so right click, go to properties. Right, we can do this, right? Same circuit as what we had before with the schematic. If I undo, we 
this, right? What we want to see is like, we want to write our Verilog in the same way that it does this. Right? We want to write our Verilog in the same way that it does this. If it was a schematic, I couldn't have two outputs with the same name. But we want to create an instance of our Verilog module. Notice that this block symbol was assigned an instance number by Quartus, right? There's the name of the Verilog module, right? Here's the uh, port list that's internal to the module, the X2 down to zero, the signal F. In this new uh, schematic, we, create, we connected this locally, the switch two down to zero to X, we connected LEDR zero to F. So we did that schematically. Let's do it via Verilog now. So file new Verilog HDL file. And actually, let me actually do it here. So you can write more than one module in a Verilog uh, file. You just have to be careful if one of them's a top level, how you name things. And, uh, also, what I'm going to do is right now I'm just going to write a module here called circuit four. Probably copy paste it to its own file because I tend to put everything in their own files. It makes my life easier in the long run. But circuit four V, this is the one that has switches for inputs, red LEDs for outputs, and module instantiate. Circuit 3V. All right, so to instantiate circuit 3V, right, we use the circuit's name, the module's name. So the module's name is circuit 3V. We create some unique instance number. We just call this instance 3. Right. And then we have to specify our port list connections. Oh. I'm getting, I need to skip something. Input wire, right? I didn't define switch and LEDR. Input wire switch, three bit bus. Output wire LEDR. Actually, if I want to refer to LEDR zero, I have to say zero down to zero. LEDR, still just a single bit single wire, one bit bus. All right, so now what I want to connect, so I want to connect the switches here to X here. So I say dot X, right? After the period, after the dot, comes the name of the signal in the module I'm instantiating. The module I'm instantiating is circuit 3V. It has two signals in its port list. X and F. I just happen to want to connect to X. So dot X. What do I want to wire to X? Well, I want to wire my switches. To F, I want to wire my red LED. I could say switch two down to zero. I could say red LED zero here and use that syntax. But when your buses are the same width, just by saying the name of the bus in the same way that back here, we specified the name of this input pin, right? And connected this directly to this and said that switch two is connected to X2. We can do the same thing in Verilog, right? Because these bus sizes are the same width, defined as switch two down to zero, X is two down to zero. If I just say connect SW to X, that'll connect switch SW2 to X2, S switch one to X1, switch zero to X0. I could do the same thing with F as well because we only have one red LED, LED R0. By default, if I use LED R, that should just connect uh, this one bit signal to this one bit signal here. So do it in a way that makes sense to you. If specifying the bus makes sense to you, right, the, the individual bits of the bus makes sense to you, do that as well too. Um, 
just know there's more than one way to do things. And so as you see examples that other people create, you may see uh, things specified in different ways. Most people will just use the bus names because uh, it's less to type, right? All right. But by doing this now and creating this module, and I'd rather put this module in its own file. Um, I just find that easier when working with a larger project. So I'm going to cut this out. But sometimes when you instantiate your module, if you write it, if you want to write it in the same file so that you can look at this other module you're instantiating, you might find that helpful. Do what helps you to learn, right? Everybody learns differently and make it work. Also, might want to put in some comments here, right? When I first did this, I would put in some comments that saying, uh, the, describing to me why I'm doing this. So if I had to go back later, right, and look at a pattern of what I'd done before, sometimes some additional comments or explanation within the module help me to understand what I did before and apply it, right? Because we always go back to some example that we uh, hopefully understood at some point, look at its pattern and say, okay, how can I apply that to my situation until we uh, learn the syntax and learn a bit more about this. All right, so let's save this module. Circuit 4B. All right, um, that was an empty file. Save that file. We made changes there. There was our uh, PDF of our circuit three, right? So circuit four now, right? This instantiation really is the same as schematically, right? As having done this. There was our Verilog module we created the symbol from. Here's the switch inputs. Here's the red LED outputs. All right, so there's our first example of a bus of how to make that connection. So hopefully you have a better idea on bus connections now. We'll do some future examples, uh, Verilog examples that use buses, but I think we'll end this here with this bus example. As always, let me know if you have questions, comments, right, things you'd like to see. Thanks for watching.